Good evening. Thanks for joining us for this split edition of Five on Your Side at Five. I'm Mike Bush here in the studio, and Allred and Casey Nolan are live at the Missouri State Capitol in Jefferson City. The special house investigation into Governor Eric Greitens has just been released, and we start our team coverage with Ann. Good evening, Mike. We are right in front of the front doors of the governor's office where he made that statement to reporters 45 minutes ago trying to get ahead of the release of this report by the legislative committee. This entire hallway full of press, dozens and dozens of members of the press, and they were just crushing into that room, an entire room of people waiting to hear what the governor had to say. He stood in front of all of those people, made about a five to ten minute statement. He did not take a single question. Questions were shouted at him, but as soon as he was done, he turned on his heel and he was out of there back into his private office. So how did we get here? Let's kind of go through the timeline of how this all began. So it took more than two years for the affair to surface, but less than two months for that indictment. On January 10th, an audio recording was released. In it, the governor's apparent mistress claimed to her ex-husband that Greitens blackmailed her to keep quiet about the relationship. Greitens confirmed the affair. He denied the blackmail. The next day, a St. Louis Circuit Attorney, Kim Gardner, she launched a criminal investigation. And then on February 22nd, the governor was indicted and booked on a felony invasion of privacy charge. After the indictment, a special House committee was formed to investigate those allegations. That committee has been meeting since March 6th, mostly behind closed doors, sometimes off-site. The latest meeting was about five hours ago here at the state capitol. House Minority Leader Gail McCann Betty from Kansas City, she is already calling for Greitens to step down. In a statement released a little more than an hour ago, she says, For the good of the state, Eric Greitens must immediately resign. If he doesn't, it will be the duty of the House of Representatives to restore integrity to the executive, executive branch of state government. The governor talked to reporters, like I said, about 45 minutes ago, and it does not sound like he's quitting. I want to say again what I've said from the beginning. This is a political witch hunt. In just 33 days, a court of law and a jury of my peers will let every person in Missouri know the truth and prove my innocence. In 33 days, this witch hunt will come to an end. The governor used those words witch hunt over and over again during his brief statement. Uh, he even compared this to the witch hunts he says are going on in Washington, D.C. My colleague Casey Nolan, he's upstairs right now with the latest on this report. Casey? Yeah, and what we are, we're inside the House chamber right now. This is where we're setting up to hear from the leadership of the House, Republican leadership, fellow Republicans to the governor. That's expected at about 6 o'clock. In the meantime, we are going through the report, as you said. So just kind of uh, bear with me here. This is Sam Clancy with KSDK.com. He's helping us out. I think maybe the first thing to mention here, this kind of is obviously what the governor is trying to get out ahead of here. This is the, the, the report opens with this, a sensitive content warning. The report contains content of a sensitive and sexual nature. The House Special Investigative Com Committee on Oversight has kept descriptions of an adult nature and coarse language in order to provide an unfiltered record of witness testimony, in some cases the identities of the witness and sensitive information have been redacted. So a couple of the things. So I think it's, it's worth saying that obviously we're on live TV, we're kind of taking this in as we go. We obviously have to be careful with what we go through as well. So just a couple of things that I think would be pertinent, uh, perhaps without the the salaciousness. Um, one thing that they, we have been hearing uh, throughout the day that is in the report indeed, and that goes to the credibility of the witness, um, the witness being uh, the woman with whom the governor has admitted to having an affair. The committee, just under the signatures on this report, says that they find this witness to be overall a credible witness. Uh, we were told that that was a unanimous decision. I don't have that in front of me right here, but that, nevertheless, the report starts out with saying that she is credible. And Sam, you were telling me it also, they have character witnesses for the, the witness as well. Yes, two people who said they know the witness two people who, for a combined 40 years. Two people who know, who've known the woman for a combined 40 years is also who they brought in. Uh, then we skip ahead a little bit, and she starts to describe uh, the incident in question. Uh, and when the governor is accused of taking this photo without her consent. I'm just checking to make sure someone's not coming in there. Okay, before, so at some point they're in, uh, allegedly in the basement of the governor's then Central West End residence. Uh, when they went into the basement at, for some sort of uh, a, a workout, it was the, the pretense according to these allegations. 
She says, uh, before you start a workout, you have to be hydrated. And the governor, then, according to this witness, puts water uh, in his mouth and tries to spit it into my mouth, at which point I realize he's trying to kiss me, but I don't want to kiss him. And then it kind of goes into further details there as well. Uh, again, I don't know that all of this, without a little bit more uh, review, we should just uh, read on the air uh, verbatim. So I'll refrain from that. Uh, but nevertheless, it's the idea that, according to this witness, According to the woman uh, at the center of this affair that the governor has admitted to from 2015, before he was in office, she's saying that he's trying to kiss her without her permission. That goes on uh, to say other things uh, as well that I think we should probably go through a little more carefully before we uh, disseminate. Mike. Casey, thank you. And we'll continue to go through that report here. We'll continue to go through that report here uh, with Casey. We are also expecting to hear from the Legislative Committee at a press conference at 6. For now, we're going to send it back to you, Mike, but we'll be back with the latest. All right. Ann Allred and Casey Nolan live in Jefferson City.